It'd still be a change of five. Would it be positive or negative, though? Oh, negative. Negative. Because my final would be 10. My initial would be 15. So it'd be negative five. So those, you should know that there will be negative velocities. And negative velocities just really indicate that you're slowing down. All right? So my acceleration is change in velocity over time. We can still use our little triangle. The same thing with velocity. We still have our triangle. And we have acceleration, change in velocity, and time. And this is the same principle. If I wanted to find change in velocity and I had acceleration and time, what would I do? If I wanted to find change in velocity and I given these two variables, what do I do? You what? Say louder. Multiply. You should know how the triangles work. If you don't know how they work, it will be kind of a struggle. Um, because the same thing, it's, it's algebraic equations. So it's just flipping around variables. Usually you're given two of them, almost always. So if you know how the triangle works and you have it down in your notes, you can use the notes on the test. And it should help you understand that if you're given the two variables, how they kind of interact with each other. So it's the same thing. Like if I want to find these ones, it'd be dividing. So if I had time and I wanted to, I had acceleration and velocity instead, I would take change in velocity over acceleration to give me time. Cool? All right. This one looks like a repeat question, this bottom right hand corner, but it's not a repeat question. Can anyone tell me why? What changed in it? So we're still looking at a graph. Okay. Not speed and distance, but it's speed and what else? So if the time. T ends with I. Time. time. So we have speed and time. If we have a speed and time graph, what do you think that's going to represent? If I have a change in speed and time, I'm representing what? Acceleration. Acceleration. So that's where this graph differs, is that first one, a distance time graph is for velocity. An acceleration graph would be speed over time. Those are two different things. And each slope represents a different thing. So if I have a flat line and a speed and time graph, what do you think that means? Does the object stop? Um, no, it's just constant speed. Constant speed or acceleration? Constant acceleration. Wait, no, constant speed. Constant speed. As opposed to acceleration. Yeah, but so if I have constant speed, am I changing my acceleration? No. no. So it has zero acceleration. So constantly zero. So. I'm gonna erase this little triangle to make room for the next part. So, if I do one of these graphs, this one will be really, really simple for you. It's gonna be the same exact thing. So our time will be on the x-axis. I'll put time in seconds. My speed, or my velocity, will be on the y. So if I have something like, these are basically some of the three slopes you'll see with the exception of that parabola shape. If I have the parabola shape, is my acceleration changing? No, no yeah, it is. It is. It's the same thing. It'd be gradually increasing or decreasing. So if I look here, right, if I have a slope that goes up, what does that mean as far as acceleration goes? Positive, um, negative, same. Acceleration going up, then it's minus. Positive. So I'll put a plus. Acceleration, right? So it's a positive acceleration. Is that a constant movement right there? Look at the slope. Is it constantly moving, increasing? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it just means positive acceleration and it's constant. If I have a flat line, that doesn't mean my object's not moving, right? It does. It's just constant. It's constant speed. So what does that mean as far as acceleration goes, though? It means your acceleration is. Zero. Zero acceleration. And then if I'm moving backward, or if I'm decreasing my speed, what does that mean as far as acceleration goes? If I'm going down, that means my acceleration will be negative. decrease the speed. Does that mean that I'm, if I'm decreasing my speed, right, it doesn't mean that you're going back to the origin on this one. So the other one with the distance and time graph, 
if I slope down and it goes back to the origin, that means I've returned to my starting point. All this one means is that you're returning to your starting speed. It doesn't necessarily mean that you return to your starting point, because they're representing two different things. Cool? The other one that people are getting confused on, I can already tell, is this. So if I have a parabola, I'm just going to go through this one. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm going to go up, swing it up like this. Right? So I have like a parabola shape, kind of like a U shape. What does that mean as far as acceleration? It's increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Is it gradual, constant? What is it? Gradual. It's gradually increasing. Hopefully, I know you guys probably can't read that on the video, but hopefully you guys in person can read that and I'll post up my notes with it. But it just means if you swing up like that, it's gradually increasing. What happens if I do the opposite? If I took this, I started with a speed of like 50 seconds or 50 meters per second and I swung down like that. Yeah, it's just the exact opposite of it. Cool? And if I went all the way down to zero, it would just mean eventually the object will stop. All right, we all on the same page? Yeah. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna move on to our last page of the study guide. <coughs> I'll erase this for you guys. All right. What is the difference between scalar and vector? Do you guys remember those? Perfect. So if I did, I'll do scalar, and then we'll do uh, vector. So it wants seven examples. These examples will actually help you understand them. So even if you don't memorize all seven, even if you just have them on your notes for the test, at least you have uh, like some of the examples on there. So if you get a question that says, is this scalar, is this not scalar, at least you have it in front of you and you know the difference between the two. But basically, scalar is going to be magnitude, right? Vector is going to be what? It's going to be magnitude with direction. direction. So magnitude for 